and then help retain the state. So when you plug in, it will go right back uh, into that state, for instance. Uh, the HP people also said that uh, you can make logic out of memory stuff. Because why not? Uh, because you can remember things, right? So if you program sequentially, you can uh, retrieve that information and then work on it and then store it back and so on. So over in a cycle time, it can do logic functions. They call the stateful logic. And uh, it's an implication uh, type of logic. So they demonstrated that one. Um, so the, this shows um, the original paper, how they made an end gate. Um, and that uh, the left hand side shows this step by, uh, you know, this uh, sort of a truth table, uh, PQ and the Q prime. Uh, how So the Q prime on the bottom equation is P bar plus Q. So that's a sort of a logic function of that. And uh, you can make an end gate on the right hand side by having another uh, gate. And uh, you can do the same. You can see the implication function of a Q and the S prime, and the, but the implication of a Q, P prime. And the, when S is equal to 0, it becomes a PQ bar. Uh, so you, you can make an end function out of it. The, uh, this shows a sort of a, the simulation uh, of a implication logic. So for different input pair, you have output. So you see that uh, big uh, uh, column, 1, 1, 0, 1 type of a thing for different uh, input combinations. So you, you can do this sort of a thing. Uh, Sang Ho Shin, uh, my group, uh, we made a memory star based uh, exclusive O gate. Uh, uh, that shows two memory star and some uh, switching uh, transistor. But uh, last night, uh, Shah uh, showed me uh, his uh, PhD proposal uh, on making a different kind of logic gates uh, under certain uh, boundary conditions. So that's uh, another exciting uh, development uh, here, even at uh, uh, Technion. Uh, you have a large scale memory stick device array plus a logic function, uh, programmable interconnects, and non volatile memory, and you, you know, embed the stateful logic. So you can have a merged logic and the memory function type of a thing. Or you can mimic uh, this uh, neural network uh, I will elaborate uh, on uh, and uh, come up with some uh, neuromorphic circuit uh, based on a uh, memory star type of a thing. Uh, Three-dimensional integration I did mention. You, know, you can build vertically, uh, put a memory star into it. Uh, that help uh, increase the uh, functionality uh, type of a thing. This uh, is what is happening at the EPFL. Uh, they can build the nanowires vertically. And also they can build the transistor into nanowire. So that opens up uh, many interesting possibilities. That's what Davide, uh, Yusuf's student, uh, is uh, doing it. The cognitive computing, you know, that's our, our ideal dream. Um, and uh, when I was uh, uh, visiting uh, Ben Gurion University, there was a sort of a uh, digital uh, receptionist, which uh, was not there any longer. But the concept was that this uh, robot will answer all your questions, um, give you information, what float Professor X is on, and, and, and that sort of a thing. In principle, that is possible. I mean, you see some uh, demonstration in Japan, you know, they do that, that sort of a thing. Uh, so cognitive computing is, in a sense, a dream. Uh, I think it, we will get there eventually. So how do we get there? Um, so people have been doing a lot of research. There's uh, many brain uh, research institutes all over the world, including European uh, Union and other places. So if you look into mouse, rat, cat, monkey, human, you know, you have so many billions of neurons and uh, trillions of synapses, uh, highly complex, interconnect. They don't really work at the gigahertz. Uh, you know, it doesn't need a high frequency, yet uh, there's uh, many intelligent things. Uh, so people have been uh, trying to simulate uh, uh, such a thing. This uh, shows uh, what uh, Lawrence Livermore National Lab people did uh, in collaboration with IBM. So they try to mimic uh, mouse uh, cortex. Uh, and uh, they have uh, so many neurons and uh, you know, so many synapses. And uh, running at uh, gigahertz, uh, it requires a 40 kilowatt of uh, power, which is much, much simpler than human brain, which has uh, 10 to the what? Uh, uh, 20 neurons and uh, you know running at the 10 uh, hertz, 10 to the 10 neurons and 10 to the 14 synapses, running only at the 10 hertz, uh, consumes only 20 watt 
um, it's analog and so on. So how can you sort of try to mimic uh, the human brain function? There has been a lot of interest in this. Uh, so people are working on it. Uh, you know, what is, what is the trick, uh, that sort of thing? Uh, including uh, redundancy and uh, reliability, that sort of thing. So, so I've been uh, reading this. Uh, I'm on sabbatical leave at EPFL, and uh, there's a lot we can learn from uh, people in the physiology or biology field. So there's uh, one book. Um, it's called The Synaptic Organization of the Brain by uh, Shefford. I think he's a maybe faculty member at Yale University. Um, so there, you have an electrical diagram or a computer architecture. <laughs> You know, this, this is written by a biologist, physiologist. Uh, so you do have a sort of a crossbar array type of architecture. This is a hypothetical. Uh, you can have a somata uh, array. You, you, you have a lot of input gathering uh, in synopsis, and then you have output, exon through exon. Exon can be fed back as an input, or can go to different uh, neurons and so on. Um, so that's a reasonable you know, a good uh, systematic diagram. So if that is a really a good model, can you build a such a thing? Uh, so there, there, there's interest uh, in that. Uh, this shows um, neuronal integrators. Okay, so if you indeed have that, you can have a stages of that one. You have a synopsis and the neurons. Uh, and then uh, maybe in synopsis, you can build a memristor uh, to do that uh, sort of a thing. Um, so, People have been uh, building this device, in fact, uh, including uh, the group at uh, uh, University of Michigan, Pinaki Mazumda, Professor Lu, and the, you know, graduate students have done that. And that cartoon, sort of uh, the con concept that you see on the top, uh, this is similarity, actually. If you read about uh, how synopsis operated, you know, these uh, particles are uh, making connection between the uh, top portion and the bottom portion. Uh, to transmit uh, action potential and that sort of a thing. And uh, as we discussed uh, previously, uh, you have an ionic movement between junctions, so sandwich structure, and they move in and out uh, that uh, make some uh, connection and they generate some electrical pulse, that sort of a thing. So, so, uh, and then a uh, number of pulses can uh, also change resistance, and which is the weight of a synopsis and so on. So there's uh, some similarity, and uh, this shows uh, measurement, and then uh, that's a device measurement on top. So that's a physiological, biological data uh, versus the top. So, so some similarity. So is it good engineering? Is it practical? And so on. So there are two schools of thought in uh, human brain uh, science. One is uh, top-down, uh, like uh, Boston University people. They start with this big system description in software, and they try to propagate down. The other one is a more, a more biologically based approach. Try to understand how physiologically all these functions and then try to come up with a model and then uh, you know, do the analysis and uh, hopefully come up with uh, some cure for brain disease and uh, some other handicap. Um, I think a latter approach will take more um, effort for doing it. I think it's more scientific in that regard. So you know, great things will take time and great effort. Uh, so I, I'm hoping that uh, good science can come out of it, and good uh, contribution by engineers will be great also. So we earlier talked about uh, ionic channels in Hodgkin-Huxley models, which uh, we said, yeah, that's a memory in 1976 model. So if you look at it, uh, original Hodgkin-Huxley model, thereafter, there, there are some modified version of it. Uh, so you have a you know, capacitive uh, current equation and the input current coming in, and you have a sodium channel, potassium channel, and the leakage channel type of a thing. And you have some battery type of DC source based on chemical uh, concentration difference between outer, outside of a membrane and inside of a membrane. Uh, and then uh, this, what is interesting is that this is three equation, right? DMDT, DNDT, DHDT. So what are those? Actually, if you Look at it, it's a variable, probability function between 0 and 1. Uh, so it's a sort of a fictitious number. But if you look at the, the uh, conductance equation, GNA is uh, m cubed times h. It's uh, four particles. So if uh, four particles become one, then you have a conduction. So it's somehow magic number four. And the GK is uh, n raised to the power of another four magic number. Uh, 
And somehow this uh, number four seems to be very intriguing. Uh, I, I read another paper uh, which also talk about uh, four particles uh, lining up uh, to form a conduction uh, type of uh, situation and so on. So I don't know whether this was uh, really out of blue, uh, you know, they had some uh, scientific uh, inspiration. But anyway, that is uh, what uh, the Hodgkin Huxley model is about. It was uh, significant enough, uh, they got Nobel Prize for uh, this one. Uh, they did a very significant experiment uh, for uh, squid axon. Uh, and they put an electrode into it, and then they did a measurement to come up with this, this sort of equations. But if you look into the GNA m cube H, which is, is like a state variable, like x1 cube, x2, and then voltage. See, that's a current through sodium channel. Potassium channel current, gk raised to power x, say, uh, 3 raised to power 4, state variable, and the voltage across it. So that's uh, sort of a potassium current. So it's a, indeed, memristive uh, device in that regard. You can model these things using uh, uh, memristive equations. So that's, uh, that's interesting. Uh, now, uh, further on, I, I found out that um, the, um, in one of the chapters of synaptic organization of the brain equation, it's not just the sodium and the, uh, potassium. Uh, there are other things uh, like uh, uh, chloride or uh, you know, uh, anion or uh, the other, other uh, the chemical materials. So you do have a similar uh, thing. Uh, you have an ionic pump uh, and then penetration into it or uh, penetration out of it uh, type of a thing. So you can think of having equivalent electrical circuit where you do have uh, conductive channels. Uh, I think, I bet uh, if you have a model, they will be all memristic in that regard, whole bunch of them. Uh, so I think that's one of the interesting aspect of it. Um, Carbo Mead, uh, who is now retired professor from Caltech, some of you may know, uh, he's brilliant. Uh, so even in his book, in uh, late 1980s, uh, he talked about uh, analog VLSI circuit and you know, neural uh, systems and so on. So he said, gee, gee, you know, do we really have to understand all this? Can you have uh, some macro model approach? And uh, so you know, he introduced a very, very simple uh, CMOS circuit uh, which can generate electrical pulses, like uh, almost uh, close to action potential. And uh, by adjusting capacitance ratio, he can make this uh, resting period longer and that sort of a thing. So, so this is one uh, schematic uh, diagram. And uh, this is another one, a repeater function type of thing through axon, uh, uh, you know, uh, link. Uh, so uh, I think uh, you can build some uh, neural network based on this sort of a thing. Uh, but uh, in terms of um, neuron, it's uh, very complex. Uh, this uh, goes back 10, 20 years, actually. Uh, there was a French group, um, yeah, S. Renaud, you know, University of Bordeaux. Um, they made a neuronal circuit to reproduce ionic uh, current generation. It took uh, for single neuron 8,000 transistors. So, you know, if you think about the 10 raised to the power 10 neurons, can you really uh, generate such an integrated circuit? That may be simply too much. But even if you do it sort of uh, partially and try to understand that can be good science uh, in that regard. We talked about uh, increasing demand for storage and so on. Uh, we talked about, you know, maybe we cannot shrink anymore, but uh, then smart people start building high-rise buildings on silicon, uh, so three-dimensional integration. So what about the memory? You know, likewise, can you have a Lego-like uh, memory structure? You just put another memory cell on top, and then you have a bigger memory system, and so on. So this is sort of a cartoon. Uh, generated by HP group. Um, so you can have a network, uh, distribution network, and you can have uh, all these layers uh, where you can have a uh, memristive memory or uh, merged logic uh, between uh, memristive memory and uh, stateful logic uh, type of thing to build up. So I think that's an interesting scenario. There are good engineering problems even in silicon. How do you handle you know, heat problem, noise coupling, and all that? So people are putting micropipes. Uh, this is not a new idea, actually. About 30 years ago, a PhD student from Stanford did, a, as a part of a PhD thesis, micropipes and the circulated water you know, to cool down the chip. Uh, I think a Fabian Pease, former student, uh, did that. 
IBM Zurich is doing it. Uh, so all good ideas are recycled back. And when time is right, you, can, you have to do it, because uh, otherwise you may not have uh, some other options. Uh, the, on top of that, uh, if, if you have a memristive device, it's a resistance value. You, know, you can have a different values. So, so in principle, you can have uh, multiple bits within memory stuff. Um, so that's that demonstration. Yeah. So you can use a different values of a memory register, which can be remembered, and then store data in a single area, single unit cell area. You can have a lot more bit capacity, uh, for instance. So that's another exciting aspect of it. I attended the meeting last August in uh, San Jose. Uh, the artificial neural network people, uh, they had a joint conference. Uh, and uh, in it, we had a special sessions on uh, memory stores. Uh, so my friend, uh, Professor Widro, uh, uh, Bernardo Widro Bunny, uh, I call him, uh, he came with his box. Uh, and that's a very interesting box. Uh, he had uh, this uh, very famous uh, former student, Ted Hoff, who invented the microprocessor at Intel, who is now retired. I think, I think he, he travels uh, also Israel and other places. Uh, and they named that device called Memistor. M-E-M-I-S-T-O-R. Why Memistor? Because, because it's memory resistor. So he called it Memistor. But it's a three terminal device that he built uh, in sort of a liquid tube. It has a three terminals in the tube and the chemical inside. It's like a grid structure, so when you apply voltage, it uh, controls the resistance. He used it for neural network training, uh, least mean square error uh, minimization scheme, which is popularly used. It was a great contribution. So some people say that oh, it's the same as a memory store. Uh, there is a difference, actually. Uh, so you can build a memory store using two memory stores. Uh, Leon Chua demonstrated that. So there is a difference. But if you take a more generalization approach, you know, what if uh, memory device has uh, multiple terminals? Uh, then this can be one of them. So in uh, the collection of memorista papers, uh, somebody included the memorista paper into it uh, because a uh, similar concept. But uh, this is where science is beautiful. Many, many good people have similar ideas. Uh, and maybe that's why uh, US uh, pattern law changed. You know, it's not who originated the idea, who filed the pattern first, and then they get the pattern right. So Lots of opportunities, uh, so young people especially. So it's all yours uh, to grab in the future. Uh, so looking into future, uh, there are a lot of good things uh, beyond the uh, resistive RAM. Uh, I demonstrated the FPGA uh, can be very, very good uh, application domain. Uh, neuromorphic systems, uh, merged memory and logic, building three-dimensional integrated circuit. But it comes with challenges, uh, like anything else. Uh, Interconnection parasitics. When you have a nanoscale interconnect, resistance tends to be very high. Uh, so that's a challenge. What about the reliability? Can you mass produce and all that? Uh, it's a good engineering problem. Otherwise, we wouldn't exist. Uh, so I'm personally very excited. Uh, I like to motivate especially young people uh, because it, there may be future in it. Uh, may, may not be, but uh, mm -hmm. I like to encourage a bright mind to get into it and make some unique contributions. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes. Professor Ken, thanks for a great introduction to the field. Questions, please. Yes. Could you please comment on the reversibility of this device? Let's say I have a memory first that just can't load, and then as the time comes, we have minutes to make it more correct, and then go to reversibility. Don't you have kind of Right. Excellent question. Thank you very much. Yes, so if you look at uh, this uh, equation, model equation, um, you know, it's a state equation. And uh, in the state equation, it's a function of uh, initial condition. So it is important uh, if you want to have a precise operation uh, to have a correct initial condition. So you are, you are right. So that's why sometimes you have to reset uh, this sort of a thing. So, so if uh, you want to make sure, then you want to, we demonstrate that in our paper, you want to apply this electrical pulse to undo what uh, has been done to bring it back to the original state if you want to repeatability type of a thing. Yeah. 
So that, that is important issue. So right now, the, the only variable that you can have uh, is either you have a high resistance or low, low resistance. I mean, especially in a bistable thing. Uh, so you have to find uh, the application accordingly. But uh, personally, I think uh, the contribution Memlista can make in the near future is a complementary function. You work build on top of a CMOS functions that you have. And uh, then, uh, who knows? I mean, uh, in the future, you can build the MemList circuit to address the issues so that you just raised. Uh, but uh, we haven't looked into that uh, impedance matter yet. Uh, another okay. question? 